Welcome to Transformations, interviewing people who are changing our world. I'm your host, Diane J. Shaver, and every other week I interview somebody who is following their passion and making a difference. And you'll notice that each person I interview is very different from the others, but what they all have in common is commitment, dedication, courage, and passion. And my wish is that they inspire you. Today we're focused on how the young are stepping up and having a positive impact, and we see this in many ways. And right now we're going to hear about a special group called the Center for Citizenship and Social Responsibility in the Public Schools in Medford, Massachusetts. And this was created in 2013, and its mission is to develop responsible global leaders and citizens that will be positive contributors to society and will work to combat important social issues and become leaders in our culture. So over the past years, over 1,500 students have participated in CCSR, Center for Citizenship and Social Responsibility, now known as CCSR, in their many courses, their clubs, their activities, and most importantly, in community projects. At each, at each school, there is a CCSR advisor who guides students in the development of project-based learning. And they do it individually or in small groups of two or three students. So today we have the founder of CCSR Project, Richard Trotter, and the advisor and program coordinator for CCSR, Michael Skorker. So I want to give you a little bit of background on these two people who have done this wonderful thing. So Richard Trotter, known as Rich, has worked in public education as a teacher and administrator and in curriculum development, professional development, school to career, and gifted and talented programs. He has authored and managed numerous state and federal grants and taught courses and workshops at Salem State College, College, no, not a cottage at all, Simmons College, Harvard University, American International College. In 2012, he was awarded a grant from the Bloomberg Foundation and created the Center for Citizenship and Social Responsibility an after-school program that developed student leaders. Since then, he was awarded a $100,000 grant from Cummings Foundation and $125,000 from the Crystal Campbell Community Betterment Project to expand the work of CCSR. Michael Skucker has worked in the, as a Spanish teacher at Medford High School for 14 years. He's been the high school advisor for the Center for Citizenship and Social Responsibility and the coordinator of the program throughout, throughout, throughout Medford High School. And he has proudly served as the Gay Straight Alliance GSA advisor for many years. He currently works as an adjunct professor teaching Spanish at Bunker Hill Community. After we chat with Rich and Michael, we will meet some of the students who are actually doing the projects and we can talk with them a little bit about what they're doing and um, why they're doing it. So, Welcome now to Rich and Michael, and thank you so much for taking time to share the Center for Citizenship and Social Responsibility with us. So, hello guys. Hi. Thank okay. Um, so I'd like to chat with you, Rich, for a moment. What was the impetus for starting the Center for Citizenship and Social Responsibility? Was it a moment of clarity? Was it a series of things? What, what was the impetus? Well, I first started back in grad school, um, I had some coursework and education, and I had a professor who very much put in my mind that education was more than just academics, and it sort of sat there for a long time, even when I taught, and I didn't do anything about it because I didn't feel like um, I knew enough about it, and I didn't have the motivation to change things. So much later, in around 2010, I had a moment, like an epiphany, but I was driving back from Washington, D.C., and I wanted to get something to listen to, so I picked up an uh, audio tape, Emotional Intelligence by Daniel Goldberg, and uh, listened to that program twice <laughs> driving home. And it really had an impact on my thinking because at that point I saw, you know, we need to do more with emotional intelligence. We do plenty with uh, cognitive intelligence, but uh, we, at schools, public schools, we don't really address the character development, moral development, and um, uh, learning things that are really important in life, like empathy and compassion. And so at that point, uh, it was in my head. And when I had a chance to get the money from Bloomberg, um, I talked to the superintendent at that time, Roy Bellison, and he supported my contention that we should do something about 
teaching uh, positive learning skills like character development and um, learning to be good citizens and responsible uh -huh. citizens. So um, that was the beginning. And for one year I did it a bit, and then eventually um, Michael came along with the, uh, his group of students at the high school, and we, we merged together and formed what's now the CCSR. So it was pretty much that one moment where I was driving back from Washington that I, it really hit me that that's something we needed to do. That's interesting because everybody I've interviewed, there has been that moment of epiphany, and it, it probably has culminated in that, but it's that moment. So that's phenomenal. So Michael, you've been the advisor and coordinator of the program. What have you seen as it develops over time and what changes have you seen in the students? So working with the students is, is really, um, it's really been uh, an experience where I, I feel like I've learned a lot from them as much as they've learned from me. Um, the students, um, as you know, choose their own projects. They choose something they're passionate about. And I think that because we are not choosing the projects for them, that's why the program is so successful. They're picking something that they really like to do. Mm -hmm. And the other part of it is that it's a collaborative effort. As you've said, we majority, almost um, all of the, the projects that are happening right now are happening in groups of, as you said, two or three and sometimes more than that. And when you give the students that, that time to be creative, I think that they not only meet your expectations, they significantly exceed them. And for me as the advisor, working with these students is um, the best time of my day. I, um, I can't stress enough that this program um, is one in which the students are um, doing these projects after school. And so that passion alone at the high school, we have 125 students and um, they have the passion to make the world a better place. And I, our hope, Rich and I really believe that you know, when you, they're going to take that passion even after high school and, and do great things with it. So for me, this has been the best part of my career, 14 years, and um, they're bright lights. I always say they, they light me up like a Christmas tree. And it's just a pleasure to work with, with kids who, who really want to make the world a better place. And at the high school alone, like I said, we have 125 students that are doing that right now. But I can see from the energy that you both have why the students are doing so well, because they have such a positive um, person behind them, somebody who really wants that for them and who respects them. So I see that you are giving the students an inordinate amount of respect that they usually don't get in school. So that, that's part of it, I'm sure. And the passion in both of you is another piece of it. And it also strikes me that our hope for the future really is going to come for some of the young people that are there now. I mean, I think about the Parkland group. I think about um, Greta Thunberg in Germany and the school for um, the school strike for climate that happened in so many cities. And now your program. So what's your opinion about that? How do you see these young people stepping up and making real changes, not, not just at the high school level, but beyond. What do you see, both of you? Well, for me, I, I think the students are now learning that they have power and they have a voice. And what happens around them affects them, uh, whether it's mm -hmm. violence, um, climate, uh, prejudice. They, they now see that they can do something about it. And they, once you give students that power, they, they, they can come forward and try to have a voice, and they do. And they're, they're, I, we meet with them and I, and I tell them they, they're more powerful than we are. They are a very powerful force that people will listen to uh, because they're the future. And, and so to me, it's, it's a good thing that all the young people are coming forward and fighting for what they think should be the world the way it should be. And uh, not a world that exists the way it is necessarily. And uh, you know, you don't have to accept things. You can you can try to change them by doing certain things that are good, uh, protesting or making their opinions known. That's a very powerful thing that you just said. And what I see right now in a lot of adults is that a lot of people have given up hope. And yeah. I think one of the things that you touched on that people need to be aware of, of what power really is. Power is not wealth. It's not position. It is really a, a commitment, a passion, a belief. Um, and I see you guys doing that with these students. Um, and right now we need them. 
desperately we really need what they're doing. And one of the things that you talked about, Rich, was the uh, um, social emotional learning and how that's key for education. But it's not present in most school. I'm in South Carolina. And we have a lot to learn from you guys um, because our school system is not very good, to be blunt about it. So what, actually, what is social uh, emotional learning and how does it impact students? Uh, social emotional learning is um, understanding of uh, certain types of beliefs and philosophies and commitments that uh, they learn that, that there's more that they can do to help the world and make the world a better place. Um, and those are the characteristics that we try to teach, like compassion, empathy, uh, communication skills, leadership skills. Mm -hmm. That's the learning that goes hand in hand with academic learning, which gives you the total picture of a student uh, or a person um, who can help make the world a better place. And so that, that whole aspect of learning um, is important in terms of character development. I also think that students need to feel that they are being supported and that there's somebody there that cares about them. Um, that's a big part of our program is that we have an advisor at every single school that, that oversees the projects of the students. And when students feel that they're genuinely cared about, that somebody actually is really concerned um, with who they are as a person, getting to know who they are, that's, that's a big part of our program. And after school, we have these advisors that, that work um, countless hours and making sure that not only are the projects done, but that they're really getting to know the students and, um, and really showing them that they matter and, and that everything they're doing really matters. So for that reason, um, I think um, that this program is, is successful. Do you think that um, the things that you've just said, both of you, are present in most schools? I, I would probably differ and say that I haven't seen that. What do you think? Uh, well, one of the things I do was outreach. And um, in Massachusetts, there's a movement to do SEL learning in the schools. And I'm on an advisory committee to try to promote that, making it somewhat of a requirement. Um, so there is some movement in Massachusetts, but in terms of actual programs that, that are formal programs, there aren't that many in uh, Massachusetts or anywhere else that I know of. Right. Um, and so that's why this program was designed as an after school activity because um, to get into the actual school day is very difficult with all the requirements for academics and testing and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when we designed it, we designed it as an after school activity so that students could do it uh, on their own time and that it wouldn't conflict with the school schedule. So that's one of the big constraints is, is the school schedules are so jam-packed that it's difficult to put new programs in. And the other part of that is when you put a new program in the school day, it impacts teachers and teachers are basically overwhelmed uh, with their own work. To have them include another segment uh, that they have to do is, is unfair and, and a burden. So we believe most, Mike and I both believe that we should integrate into the classroom also, but realistically, it makes a lot more sense to try or do it as an after-school mm -hmm. project first, and then gradually, as the program grows and becomes more successful, uh, build it into some of the school schedules um, a as you can. The second part of that is, um, is we could spiral this learning into regular classrooms by doing uh, these many moments of teaching where you take a, a, a situation in a classroom or a topic and you twist it around to make it a social emotional issue by asking certain questions and having the students uh, identify with somebody in the situation and how they would react and, and what they would do. So that was, that's sort of that integration uh, as in, into the classroom as the way it is mm -hmm. might work because it wouldn't require a whole new course, a whole new responsibility, but just a few moments each week. So there'll be teaching moments. That's another way of doing it. I think it's better to have a project-based unit like we have, project-based learning, mm -hmm. where the students actually are living and doing the project and processing what they're doing from many directions. Because the project sometimes require them to go to the city council or to raise money uh, to do outreach, and then they, the, the project now becomes part of their, their world, and they, they 
not only learn a lot, they actually get a great deal of satisfaction by creating something that's positive to help somebody. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, going back to the question, I don't think it's being done very much, and I think our program is a good way of doing a transition to make it more common in all schools. But I wonder, do you ever fantasize about maybe making a whole new educational system? I fantasize about having this program in all schools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, that, that's what you're, you're kind of building something yeah. there that's phenomenal. That's, that's, that's why we appreciate having you work with us on this sure. issue. We're trying to spread the word that this is something that's not very expensive. Mm -hmm. it's, it just requires the right motivation and dedication and belief. And the money is not prohibitive, mm -hmm. and it can be done anywhere. Just in, in with, we'd be happy to help anyone who's interested to get it started because it doesn't cost much. I, I think for, for me, I'm currently in the classroom as well. I teach um, my classes, and then I'm doing um, this program as well. I, I, will, I fantasize about a day where, you know, every single school system puts the whole child first. Um, when you teach the whole child, when you really get to know who you're dealing with, uh, everything else falls into place when they feel like they're cared about and they're loved and they're supported. And I've learned that um, content comes next, but really first, if you really want to be successful in the classroom, because uh, the kids really need to like you. They need to, they need to know that you're invested in them as much as they need to be invested in the class. So the first step I always spend the first week just getting to doing some activities, getting to know you, figuring out who they are, what they like. And the first class, even if it's the same level, might be very different from the next class because I have totally different people in the next class. So if you start looking at them as human beings, which is what they are, uh, they, you, the success rate is, is much higher. Another, just on Michael's point, um, one of the things I learned from uh, emotional intelligence is that uh, – I didn't say a percentage, but as a teacher, I'm a former teacher, and Michael's teaching now, about 90% of the problems in a classroom are emotional, not cognitive. And that takes away from learning. And so when a student doesn't perform well, it might be there's something at home going wrong. Uh, they, have, they have some emotional difficulties. So this program not only helps other people that they're helping, it helps the teachers, the students are doing it because it gets them to feel positive about themselves and it might just be an antidote to loneliness or anxiety mm -hmm. because they, they're with other students doing a positive thing and it becomes a natural high and and, it, and students learn from that experience and they also start to believe that they can do anything and we've heard that from a number of students that after doing their projects they think they can do anything which is a powerful educational moment mm -hmm. when you believe in yourself and then they, they're more apt to pass it on, like Richard was saying. They believe in themselves. They're proud of themselves. I, we have freshmen in the group that are taking on projects they never thought they could do, and they've just finished their projects. We had our project fair two weeks ago, and I'm watching these freshmen give their presentation on something where at the beginning of the year they were very unsure of themselves. Now they feel very proud of themselves, and the idea is that we're trying to pass it on. We're trying to pass on being kind to one another, empathy, resilience, all of that is all built into the program. Those are such powerful, powerful things. And I think the culture that we have right now and what we're seeing politically and everything else is a result of people not having what you two are talking about. Yeah. Um, that's, that's how powerful what you are doing is. And I, and I think, again, I said it before, but I'll say it again, that a lot of adults are feeling extremely powerless because they never learned what you're teaching. I think you need to do this for adults, too. I think there needs to be some place that we can all learn from you. And the other thing that came to me, you guys need to be doing TEDx talks. Have you done that? <laughs> yeah. Someone had told me that. <laughs> We're going to go on yeah. the road. <laughs> can you coach us? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am a coach, actually, but um, yeah, absolutely, you should do that because then then it gets exposed more and just yep. you need to spread this. This needs to be way beyond Medford and Massachusetts. I think has always been a pretty liberal um, state. That's true. So the fact that you're there is not surprising. The fact that you're not where I am is not surprising either. But I. I think this is, I think you've got a hold of something much more powerful than you know. And I mean, I, I am aware that you understand what you're doing for students, but I think that this,
piece is so powerful and I think it needs to go into the adult world when you're ready, if you can stand dealing with adults. Um, that would be a really good thing too because people have forgotten the things that you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, people get caught up in their own lives and they're worried about making money or raising the family and they, and, um, they get they lose sight of the fact that we're all here to help each other. I mean, you know, humans are humans and we owe it to each other to make sure no one is being discriminated against, hurt, or, or punished for no reason. And um, it only makes the world a better place if people help each other. And, and you're right, I, I totally agree that we need this much more often in more places, mm -hmm. yeah. including adults too. Yeah. yeah. So start thinking about that. How, I'm, and I don't want you to get overwhelmed, but just start thinking how this can expand. Because again, I think you have a hold of something that you don't even realize how huge it is yet. So let me ask you, what is your vision right now for this program? I mean, we would really like to have the program in, a, in as many schools as possible. Um, we're trying to, I think the model, we've sort of built the model. We started at the high school and we made sure that it worked at the high school. And um, now we started with 18 students at the high school. Now we're up to 125. When we proved that that model was successful, then we rolled it out to the middle schools and the elementary schools. And so this year we're in every single school in the district. Um, I think that now that we have the model down, I think we're, we're ready to sort of bring it to as many schools as we can. Yeah, and, and one of the things that's really been wonderful is this project, the 3D Crosswalk, has sort of spurred the interest in our program. You know, we've been trying to get something uh, out there. I, I'm constantly contacting media sources, celebrities to be a voice for us, We need because we need a voice. Uh, somebody who will attract attention and it could be a, an athlete, an actor, a politician, a poet. Oh, by the way, Richard Blanco was coming out next next year to talk to the students. Uh, um, so I totally agree with you. We need to expand it. Um, we believe that this is really important. And um, I am going down to the superintendent's conference in Massachusetts in the summer to present to those superintendents uh, in Massachusetts. So we are making some progress in that way and you know your program and other programs like this will certainly help us cool um when you go to harvard i mean anything happening there because that's that was when i lived in boston i went to school in boston and mm -hmm. that was the mecca i think that has changed slightly but it still is it still carries prestige and that i would think that would be a good place for you too i, I did do some outreach there and contacted um Howard Gardner actually responded to my email. Uh, it's difficult, I, they, I have to hit the right person who really has an interest in this and wants to get engaged. I did uh, meet uh, uh, Dr., um, what's his name? His brother, Deepak Chopra. Dr. Chopra is, it's not Deepak, but his brother, Sanjay. Yeah. Sanjay Chopra, who's a Harvard uh, professor and, and a yeah. medical surgeon, uh, is interested in the program. He's coming out next month to speak to the students. So we, we have that connection, and I'm, I'm gonna to try to get him to give me more networking type things going on with Harvard. Um, we also have a close connection to Tufts. Yeah. This Tufts has the Tisch uh, School or Community Service. Right. And we, and we have some interns from Tufts that are working with us. So we're trying to get the academic world involved also. Um, in BU, there's a program that's similar to ours that they run at BU Grad School. Mm -hmm. So um, we're taking, I'm, I'm real outreaching there, Michael, and Michael does most of the work, uh, interior work. Uh, I'm out there trying to get the word spread and, and get us connections and get us on, uh, some, get some voice for us. Yeah. Because we, like you, we believe this is very powerful and very important. It is very powerful. Yeah. Um, and, and also the thing that I see that you've learned from your program is that you're powerful and you can do anything. So, <laughs> so you can get this out there. And, and um, the Chopra um, contact is, is a good one. And that leads to Oprah. And well, yeah. I mean, my, my dream is to be on Ellen one day. So we're hoping to get there too. Yeah. Well, I think she's probably more accessible than Oprah. Yeah because she's not as inundated, so I would go for it. Yeah, we have, we have, we have fingers crossed. We've, uh, we've outreached to her uh, through some of the uh, links they have for Students. nominating uh, people who change the world, and we've nominated Michael. Um, but right now, we're still waiting for that phone call. <laughs> 
There, I hope you get several phone calls. I hope it's not just one. I, I, think, I don't think there's any question. I think it's a matter of time. And I think that things are building because the need is so great. And I think um, I, I'm being political right now, so I apologize. But I think everything that's going on now has shown people what we really need to do and how we really need to be with one another. And I think that you're right in the middle of this wave. So I, I think you're right on time. I think it's perfect. So it's, it's all going to happen. And I, I will be delighted to hear about it. So I, I want to know about it. So um, tell me a little bit about the students who are doing the projects. Um, how did they come to you? What were their backgrounds? Just anything you want to tell me about them. Sure, well, yeah. Um, the program is open to every sing anybody who wants to join. There are no restrictions. Okay. Um, so in, in August, we start in August now. We used to start in September, but now we start at the end of August and we put out announcements for any student that's interested in, in working collaboratively on a project that they're passionate about that in some way makes the community and the world a better place. So um, I feel, so I accept anybody that wants to come. We sit down, um, usually September and October, um, I meet in the morning. So I book starting from seven o'clock until the bell rings at 745 and mm -hmm. the students pitch their ideas and um, they sort of have to work with them in, in sort of figuring out what's gonna work best and that takes time. Mm -hmm. uh, and those meetings last about two months and then once they get the approval, uh, they start their working on their projects. And at the high school, we have two advisors, myself and Sarah Fard. Um, we work with the kids. And so this year we had 60 projects that we were advising. So wow. we split that between the two of us. And the advisors at the middle schools um, do a similar process, um, working with the kids. It's a, little, a lot more coaching that goes on because they're younger there. So um, they still the same process, coaching, working, taking their idea and making it into one that is actually gonna, can be able to happen. Um, for example, you're going to hear from somebody today that um, literally was the proponent for a plastic bag ordinance and was the person that made the plastic bag ordinance happen in our city in Medford. And she was the one that did all of the work. She sat down with me in, in September and said, this is what I want to do. And so we went through the channels and the steps to make it happen. And so we, I supported her. I, I was in the background, but really it was her that was doing all the work. So even though we're the guides on the sides, we really believe that the students should be the ones that are that are in there doing the work because that's we want them to learn something. We want them to learn how to be able to look somebody in the eye, how to how to um, sit down in a formal meeting and pitch your idea because a lot of these students are going to the mayor and have to go to city officials in order for their projects to happen. So um, it really is a co is a collaborative process, but we want to make sure that we're supporting the students but not doing the work for them. Yeah, which is wonderful. I mean, that in itself is empowering. I, I think, Michael, you are such an empowerer. I mean, that's come through in everything you said. It's it's really wonderful to see. And can you clone you? We need <laughs> 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 oh, that, would, that would be really good if we could do that. So, so, the science. <laughs> so but on that point, that's a really good point. It, it shows you that this is what counts. This is important, not the money. It's not a very big expense, but we need teachers and people like Michael to be the role models for the students and, the, and getting the students to do certain things, to help them, um, and also attract them. And Michael attracts students. He's like the Pied Piper. <laughs> I love it. But I can see why. I mean, because it's a welcoming presence. And I mean, growing up, I don't know if you guys remember, it's not a lot of fun sometimes. So when they find somebody who is open and welcoming and supportive, I mean, that's nirvana right there. So maybe we can meet some of the students now. What do you say? Should we interview some of them? Yeah, I just want to mention one thing, Diane, before yes, you go. We have a webpage <clears throat> that people can go to uh, to see all the projects and see all the information about the news about our, uh, our, our group. So uh, at some point, we could give you that webpage. It's very easy. Right. I have all of it. And that will go on the um, self-discovery um, media page. It will have all of that stuff. And I'll put it on my website, too. And I have a lot of links that you guys sent me, and I'll put all of that there. Oh, great. Thank great. you so Thank much. You. Oh, my pleasure. I mean, this is, this is phenomenal. Do you know what it's like for me to come across people like you? I mean... In, in spite of everything going on, it's like, yes, this is going to be okay. And that's what you guys do for me. 
So I thank you for that already. All right, so let's meet some students. Let's find out what they're doing. Sure. Um, first up, um, sure. you're going to hear from um, twins. Um, their names are Jennifer and Jessica Dos Santos. So we'll, we'll let them sit there. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you in a minute. Hi. Okay, who's Jessica? Who's Jennifer? I'm Jessica. And I'm Jennifer. Raise your hand. I didn't see you. Jessica. Jennifer. Okay. Hi, guys. Hi. It's good to see you. Um, I want to find out what is your project? All right. So um, we're seniors right now, but we started CCSR sophomore year. And since then, we've been working with the elementary schools. So we wanted to, we both went to the Brooks Elementary School. So we wanted to do a project that gave back to them and okay. to like make their, their school like a better place. So we started small sort of with, um, we made inspirational posters and we put inspirational quotes on the posters to hang around the school so that when the students walked by, they would like read it and feel inspired in their day. And then we moved on to a bigger project at the Brooks Elementary where we worked with the art teacher to make a, um, like we call it the planets on the playground. So we use the solar system as a theme and we painted the planets on the playground. So there was already an earth there and then we made a rocket ship coming out with a bunch of pathways leading to the different planets with the names of the planets so that um, the kids could like follow the path and they could like interact with it, but also learn about the solar system. And we wanted that to be like, um, inspire them to sort of like look into the STEM fields later on in their life. And maybe that could be like a, pa um, a pathway for them to get there. And then this year, which is, um, we expanded into the Columbus Elementary School. And so right now we are, um, during the winter and all those months, we were planning it because we're also gonna play paint on their playground and so we just we met up with the um, principal and the art teacher of the Columbus and we um, they needed help in the math field in the math um, subject so we decided along with the principal to make to paint a large multiplication table on their playground so then maybe they could like make up their own type of games or like practice their math um, their multiplication problems. And so right now we are, um, we're planning on painting at the end of this month. And so we're gonna go there with, along with the students who are in the CCSR club yeah. at the Columbus. So we can be like an interactive thing where we work with the um, smaller children so they can also feel as if they're a part of the community. Um, and so we're gonna do that at the end of this month and then it's gonna be a big multiplication table and also we're gonna do a couple like colorful designs so it's not so um, like cement, just cement everywhere. And, wow. and it can be a fun, colorful environment for them. Cool, so yes. why do you care about these kids? Um, so me personally, I remember going to the um, Brooks School and I just remember how the teachers were always so nice and how they were um, caring and they cared about us. So right. um, me personally, I decided um, when I heard about this club and I was thinking about something to do, I thought that it would be fun to just go there and show them how even um, when you get older, you can also help others, like um, people are helping you. And I thought that was just gonna be like something fun to do. And then I would be able to see my um, old teachers and see how they were doing. Cool. Cool. And go ahead. As for me, um, uh, for the planets on the playground, we I wanted to like make a space where the kids could like um, see like have fun on the playground. Like there was already like a four square and um, hopscotch and things, but making the playground floor so colorful with all the colors, it yeah. really made it um, a place where the kids could feel like included and an interactive space for them. Cool. You guys are really impressive. I, I just have to say. So has this changed you at all doing these things? Um, well, I definitely think so. I think our leadership skills have um, been more defined or like um, we've been in more of a practice with the leadership skills because we've had to email the um, principal and the different heads of the departments to set up all of the um, things that we needed to do. And we've also, um, for this part, project particularly, we had to reach out to um, 
we decided to reach out to one of the um, painting companies, the hardware um, local business, the local business, so we could um, get paints that were donated. Um, so we could do this project at the Columbus. So I feel like we definitely um, learned more about the communicational skills yeah. that we'll be able to use when we go off to college and beyond that. Too. Wow. So do you see yourself doing more projects before you leave the school? Um, we're, I think we're going to um, stick to the ones we're already doing because we... It's a uh, lot. Yeah, we still have to paint at the Columbus and then finish up at the Brooks. And after that, there's going to be like a ribbon cutting ceremony to like show it. Um, but I think for right now, that's um, that's that's all we're going to do for now. That's that's a lot. <laughs> so thank you so much. You guys are so impressive. Um, first of all, I want to say that um, the way you present yourselves and the way you talked about your project is very professional. So I just want to tell you, good job all the way around. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was nice to meet you. Thank you. You as well. Bye. Bye-bye, honey. Hi, it's Michael again. Hi, um, Michael again. Hi. We're gonna, I'm going to introduce um, the next student. His name is Marco McKelleny. Hello. Hey, Michael. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. Tell me, what project are you involved in? Um, so I'm involved in two major projects. Um, okay. So my first project is um, the Oxfam Hunger Banquet. Mm -hmm. um, so basically what the Hunger Banquet is, is it's basically a simulation of the struggles of the lower class. Um, so there's a $5 entry fee. Um, we host it at a church. Um, and basically what happens is um, somebody picks out of a lottery. Um, as people come in, they pick out of a lottery. And that chooses what role they're going to be, whether they're going to be lower, middle, or upper class. Um, and depending on what class you are is the type of food you'll get. So if you're in the higher class, you're going to get, you know, a steak um, with like green beans um, and like ice cold water. If you're in the lower class, though, you're going to get something like rice and beans. Um, and obviously, there's less people that are going to get in the higher class um, right. because in general, <laughs> there's not as many people um, within the higher class. Um, and it's expensive, too. Let's not leave that out. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and basically, the point of the project um, is to show food insecurity um, within the lower class and how people, and the middle class as well, how people within the middle and the lower class um, deal with everyday life. Obviously, it's specifically on food. Um, so, and then my second project um, is a soccer charity uh, tournament. Um, and basically, this was an idea at first um, that I thought of in Mr. Sporker's class to try to bring the community together um, with a sport that I love. Um, as well as my friends that helped me do this project. Um, but we also found a great cause for it. Um, so obviously, you had to pay an entry to enter a team into the tournament, um, and all the funds um, go towards an Ethiopian village um, where they're lacking a water treatment system. So our plan is to have a service trip up to that Ethiopian village um, in order to implement that system there. Wow, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty wonderful. So what was it that drew you to these two projects? What, what were you thinking? What was it that went through your mind? So um, the first thing that we learned when we joined the CCSR is really um, to pick something based off of your passions. Okay. Uh, so for the soccer charity tournament, for me, it was a no-brainer um, to have something like that because I love soccer. Um, but we also had to find, um, you know, something else more something more to it um so we couldn't just have a soccer tournament because that's great um it brings together the community people are having fun um but we also need to find a cause for it a deeper meaning for it um and obviously the reason that we did the CP ethiopian village is because my friend um who helped me with the project joey Rumanap, um he has a sister adopted from that specific ethiopian village um wow. which is struggling right now and we thought that would be a great idea in order to help that village. Um, it is a great idea. That's wonderful. Wow. And what about the food and the class thing? It was interesting because we're supposed to be a classless society. We're not. I mean, you got it. So what was it that drew you to that one? Um, so I come from um, Brazilian heritage um, where we're very religious. Um, and my aunt's a pastor, so every once in a while um, I'll go to her church. Um, and every Wednesday, they have a food for the homeless day. Okay. Um, so the very first time I went there and I, you know, 
I saw everything that went on. Um, I was, I was in shock as to the amount of people um, that struggle every day with something as simple as, you know, getting a meal for themselves, um, drinking water, um, and so on. Um, so again, with my other friend, uh, Aldo Santos and Joe Schmidt, who both also go to church and there's like similar things going on there. Um, they do give food, um, to homeless people. They provide food through, you know, things like, um, can drives and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We thought we should go a step further and try to inform people, um, as to how these people live, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. so instead of just providing food, um, obviously all the money that we raise from the hunger banquet goes to Oxfam charity. Um, we wanted to inform people of what these people go through. So throughout it, um, they're both experiencing it and hearing it from us um, as we talk about, you know, different types of statistics on um, the struggles of the lower class. Yeah. But that's a very profound kind of learning for you and, and for everybody who was involved, because we usually don't think about people who are less fortunate in the day to day thing. So, yeah. so how has this changed you or has it? It's definitely changed me. Um, okay. I feel as though um, when I first joined the CCSR, community service is like a necessity in order to graduate. And I thought, you know, like, oh, I, I have to get my community service and I have to, you know, join a club or something or just, you know, drag my way through this uh, yeah. guidance counselors. Um, so I joined the CCSR. Um, as you could tell, Mr. Sporker has so much energy um, and he, he gives so much to all the students. Yes, um, yeah. And I thought really, I thought of a problem. Obviously the first, my first project was the hunger banquet. Um, and I started to realize that um, as a Medford um, student, um, I have to contribute more instead of just going home and doing nothing after school. Um, I have to try and do something. Um, and as these projects went on, um, you really feel a type of fulfillment um, that I felt um, when I saw at my aunt's church with them giving food to these homeless people, and I wanted to experience the same thing uh, myself again, um, but through, you know, myself and my peers taking the initiative of, you know, creating a project like that. Um, so I guess in all, it's definitely changed me for the better. And going off to college as a senior, um, I hope that I sort of left my mark in trying to help the Medford community a little more. Do you think it's going to impact your future and what you do in your future? So I'm actually going into education and I think the CCSR is a big reason as to why. Yeah. Uh, I really saw, you know, a great role model in somebody like Mr. Squarker um, as to how you can help people. Um, and I think going into education and into the school system is a great way and a great platform in order to help um, both students and adults like you guys were talking about. Sure. That's wonderful. Thank you so, so much. It's really impressive. And I'm delighted for you that you did it and you will change lives by doing what you did. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So next up, we have uh, another fellow senior, John and Tapa. Okay, good. Thanks for the intro. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good, you? I'm doing really good. Now, I'm, after meeting you guys, I'm doing great. So tell me about your project. So my project is Project Little Library, which is okay. pretty self-explanatory um, in the title. There are a lot of them around Medford, um, but they're pretty predominant in South and pretty much uh, West Medford. And I live up in the Heights and North. Okay. So they're not really around there. And there's also, there's a pond near there. So what I wanted to do was sort of put more in the area because it's really densely populated with the Roberts School being nearby. Okay. Which is also a member of the CCSR community um, as of last year, I want to say. Cool. So sort of being able to have a project that one is in walking distance of the Roberts Elementary School and having students who are trying to look for projects and do um, right. sort of setting a, a baseline of, oh, we can do this as well and help maintain them and make more if necessary, take measurements off the original. Okay, so walk me through it. Walk me through what you did. So what I did was I started out by designing um, and sort of taking reference photos from other libraries. There's one in front of the Columbus Elementary School, okay. this one part of City Hall, which was sort of the two that I took um, general ideas from. Okay. And 
looked around my house, found some books and tried to fit them. And then I happen to work at a, at a hardware store, which helps with some of the other CCSR projects. And they directed me towards Fabrizio Wood Products, which is in Somerville. Okay. Um, Somerville Everett area. And they actually generously donated a lot of the lumber. Cool. Towards it. So then it was getting the measurements down and sort of going from there because what I liked about doing this project as going into college next year as an industrial design major, sort of learning new skills and how to do certain forms of carpentry and other things that I had to learn for this project. Okay. So it was all a learning process and sort of taking it one step at a time and looking at reference photos and outsourcing and that was, outsourcing was a huge part. And talk about that a little bit. So the outsourcing sort of, I want to say happened by accident, but it was a happy accident. Um, okay. Most of those things are. Yeah. Um, what happened was I started at one place that I knew, um, which was Modern Hardware, and they directed me towards Fabrizio Wood Products, who then directed me back and then directed me to Blank's Trophy and Revere. So what was cool about the project was that all the materials were bought from family-owned businesses in Medford, Revere, and um, Everett. Cool. So n anything that, and donated by other businesses, my father's a painter, um, he was able to donate some of the paint and some of the roofing material. And Modern donated the um, plaques mm -hmm. that came from Blank's Trophy. So the money went to them. The grant was outsourced from Tufts, the Tufts Community um, Neighborhood mm -hmm. Fund. Um, and so it was sort of a local college supporting other local businesses with a local community. So you had to go around to a lot of businesses and do a lot of fast talking, right? Oh, it was fun though, it was a good time. Yeah, it, that's, I mean, I think people want to help and it's getting out there and making the contact. So I, I'm not quite getting all of it. So um, explain to me, so you made these libraries? Yeah. Okay, so what, like, what was the structure like? How big? All of that stuff. Tell me that. Um, it's a little under two feet tall. Okay. Um, and it's got a plexiglass door in the front so you can see into it. Cool. Um, it also has a solar light on the roof so you can see into it on darker days. Basically, you just walk up to it, um, then you take a book, Yeah. leave one if you're looking to get rid of some. People do during spring cleaning or if they're mm -hmm. moving. Sure. Um, they just put one in if there's space, take one if they want one, or take as many as they want. There's a pond in walking distance from the original one, which will be yeah. going up in the next couple of weeks. So a lot of people take walks there. There's some benches there. They can walk over, take one go and if they like it they keep it give it to someone else or put it in another one how many did you do um right now only one due mm -hmm. to um just how everything went down with grants and we were lucky to get the tufts grant that, that's enough that's a lot i mean what you did and how you put it together is pretty impressive well thank you no it is it is and and it was um a lot of things i mean it was the physical technical stuff but also going out and making the contacts and doing all that so that's quite wonderful congrats thank you and yeah. now, now you can take this into as a design project into your college career right one of the things that i wanted to do um mr scorker recommended me that i join um, the CCSR my junior year and due to scheduling conflicts I wasn't able to make it and so this year as a senior I was luckily able to get in early and do it cool. and one of the big things I wanted to make sure I did going into an industrial design major was to make sure that I was able to work with industrial community engagement mm -hmm. and make sure that it was affecting the city and affecting my peers and doing all that I could do. Wow and you did. Thank you. Hopefully. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank Congrats. you. Um, so I'm going to introduce one more group. Um, it's uh, Louisa Barboza, Sarah Alcindy, huh? <laughs> Sorry. And Rubia Fernandez. Thank you. Hello. Hi. 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 How are you? Good. Good. Cool. So tell me about your project. Yeah. Um, so we chose to do a festival in Medford. Um, so it's called Medford's Diversity Day. And we started it last year. All three of us were in Mr. Scorker's class um, called um, Diversity and Community Enrichment, yeah. Um, and 
I took, personally took notice that um, the city surrounding us, like Somerville and Cambridge, um, had a lot of similar festivals to celebrate um, the diversity, and it felt as if Medford didn't have something like that, um, a cultural festival, so that's why I wanted to pursue a disparate project. And it's a yearly event. We're currently still planning the 2019 event. Cool. Uh, so we're like kind of on the home stretch of that. So tell me about it. What happens in this? Um, yeah. What is, it, what is it for? How does it work? Who's involved? Give me, give me the lowdown. Uh, like she said, we started in the classroom uh, with Sparker and Originally, it was just me, like the three of us, we it was sure. uh, working on the project um, with uh, the diversity and inclusion director of Medford uh, at City Hall. Sure. And because uh, he was the one who kind of like brought up the idea of like having some sort of festival, um, talking about like showing diversity. And then we kind of really like thought about it, like, because um, for us, like, we are all Brazilian so like our culture like there's there's always something going on there's always some party that like we go to and like we we end up you lucky people <laughs> um and, like and, it, and we just like we thought like we wanted something like that for Medford so we kind of talked to Neil about it and uh, Neil was like he would he was on board he was like I will help you guys uh, I think it'd be great so we kind of just started off there and it was originally just the the four of us working on the project uh, and then we got to talk to the mayor about it the mayor loved the idea she approved like she said that she was on board with it uh she helped us like talk to organizations that would want to be there because um really what we what we did for the festival was uh we reached out to different organizations to have tables Okay. At uh, the festival to talk about their the diversity and what they do um, to showcase diversity in Medford, and then we try to get food, um, different kinds of food for wh whatever culture, and then uh, we also uh, try to get performances of different cultures. So we try to get singers, we try to get some dancing groups, um, and all sort of things. And Neil really helped us with all of that. And um, I mean, the mayor as well, she helped. Um, and we also had the help from uh, Ali Fisk, who she, she works at City Hall, where she helped us really like get the um, inclusion for uh, people with disabilities with getting a Moby mat, which is for them to go onto the grass and everything so that they could see all of the tables. And I think it was just, we really just, we thought of like so much that we wanted to put into this and it really came true for us. Uh, even though it was raining that day and on our rain dates, so yeah. Oh, wow. So it, one has already taken place, but you're gonna do another one? Is, am I understanding it correctly? So the festival itself is uh, every year. We try to, we're trying to implant it so that it's every year. Okay. And uh, yeah, last year was our first year running it. Congratulations. Wow. So what that has so many moving parts. I mean, it's incredible because between the physical space that you need and the entertainment and the food and the tables and all of this stuff, it was a lot to think about. It really was. And this year we actually had more help because we have more adults who want to get involved, especially the South Metro group. So it's going to be in a bigger location with more tables and more, more, more people. So our hope is to really reach out to all of Medford and really celebrate the diversity regardless of culture, religion, or disability. So how many people usually come to your events? So last year, because of the rain, we only had, I would say, 40-ish, 30-ish. Yeah. And it was mostly people who were working the fair with us. But, this but it's the first time. That's how it is. I mean, it just is how it is. This year, we're hoping for over 100. Cool. So how are you getting the word out? What are you doing to get the word out? So our main, um, we're using uh, the websites, the Facebook pages of the city and CCSR. We're also using Backpack Express. So the flyers will go out through all the students as well, um, through all the CCSR uh, schools involved. And um, we're just gonna really, we have a flyer putting up at the park, to our banner up at the park, so people who drive by can see it too. Also a lot of the South Medford parents that have been helping us um, have been 
spreading the word, going to businesses, asking, can we put this poster up? Uh, can we put this flyer up so that people can see it? And, and they've just been, they've been incredibly like uh, generous helping us with this project. Well, they're impressed. That's a big project. I mean, that's very impressive. That's pretty incredible. And I like that it's going to be. So are you seniors? Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. So we're all seniors. And um, a friend, I found a friend of mine who's currently a junior, and she's really interested in taking over the project. Yeah. So we kind of have a strong baseline now, um, which is kind of what we've been working on for the past two years. And um, it's really just a matter of passing it down, because um, we've done a lot of heavy work and now it's just a basic like guideline that you've got to just repeat every year um mm -hmm. so we're really glad that we found somebody to take over the project that it continues um for years and years on even though we will no longer be um students here at Mifter high cool have you put together a book that has all the guidelines and what you do and all that stuff so you can give it to somebody um no not really what we do <laughs> um <laughs> Tell me. through a spreadsheet um and good. share an email all together so whenever one person gets an email the other one gets the email because uh, we made an email for the the festival itself and through there that's where we have all our contacts like all the people we've talked to for this festival so i mean i think that that will be something we can easily pass on to someone sure. and show them how it works so yeah we focus on keeping it all online so our flyers, the templates um, for the flyers that I've created, it's all online, and um, the businesses that we organize it, or that we have organized, it's um, online, um, connected through that shared email account. So, um, meant for diversity at Gmail. So, like we all have access to it, and it's just a matter of giving the password to somebody else, um, who it will then take over the project. Cool. So, has this changed any of you or all of you in any way doing this project? <laughs> uh, I think that we <laughs> definitely changed. It was a lot of reaching out to people and being able to present your project and being able to connect with new people. And I think that we've all learned to just not be afraid to ask for help or ask or ask for donations or ask for um, ideas and help us develop our whole project. So I think we've learned a lot. I'm going to ask each one of you. So you have to keep answering. Oh, okay. Um, oh, thank I mean, you. definitely has... Um, change just how I see the world and like working in the city. Um, so this isn't my only project, but like this project, I've just been able to connect to so many different people and learn what their organizations did, organizations that I didn't know existed, but um, like Neil Osborne, the director of um, the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, I've learned, been able to learn so much from him and just connect to a lot of different people in the medical community that do want to see a project that, like this and they do want to support students like us. Yeah, um, it definitely changed my life. I mean, CCSR itself has changed my life. Um, mm -hmm. So for the better, for sure. Um, I mean, this project itself, um, I, I got to meet so many people at the first festival, even though it rained, there were people there. And yeah. I got to, I mean, I got to meet them and like, they like thanked us. And it, it was like, it was like a great moment for me because like, I mean, like a complete random stranger walking up to me and being like, thank you. Like, you did a great job and I to think like just because I created this something that started so small with an idea to grow so big um that like impacted other people's lives was really like life-changing for me. Yeah it is and I mean going forward it's going to be something that you take with you now you know you have power and now you know you can create anything. So congratulations, ladies, and uh, much success in this great next one. And for whatever else you do in the future, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so now we're going to continue on to um, the final project um, that we're going to do. Oh, tell me. Project. Um, so, <laughs> to, to <laughs> so, sorry. Um, so, like Mr. Scorker said earlier, I was um, the person who brought forward the thin film plastic bag ordinance um, here yeah. in Medford. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so ha just a little background of it. I, um, I just n um, noticed that the cities around us had been enacting these kinds of ordinances and I kind of wanted Medford to do something similar. So a year ago, I started, more than a year ago, I started um, an online petition um, and got over 600 signatures in the span of two months. Um, so with that information, I was working closely with another student 
I'm, um, I was working closely with another teacher named um, Curtis Student, and he really helped me um, get connected with the Medford City Council and get a kind of time slot in which I could present this to the council. So um, after presenting it to them with a whole bunch of information and a, whole, um, and a lot of letters from organizations um, that supported it as, as well, um, then the council uh, moved moved forward with it to draft, so they voted unanimously to draft the ordinance. And then it was about eight months um, in gathering information to come up with an initial draft. And then after so many meetings um, and so many voting it, that happened, um, it's actually got passed. So it's recently got signed by the mayor two months ago, and it goes into effect in July. Wow, a big congrats to you because that, that is a huge, huge, huge problem. I interview people in Australia and other places that are cleaning out plastics and those bags, by the way, kill sea life. And it takes X number of months for a turtle, a sea turtle, for instance, to decompose. And then it releases a plastic bag again and another animal can ingest it. So what you did is very powerful. So I thank you for that. Thank you. Um, and recently, there's going to be a new project coming up as well to get rid of polystyrene. Um, yeah. So we're hoping on a, which is a foam van. Um, mm. So we're kind of just, I'm really happy to see that Medford is like moving forward um, because we do have the Middlesex Reservation, which is right next to our school and it covers, um, and it's like the biggest forest in the area. Um, so it's like a protected, a protected reserve and then just having Medford in which the fells is partially in, um, be protective of their environment, um, then I think it's just great. Wow. That is so wonderful. And I mean, you guys, I, I don't know if you understand that you have impact and everything that you've done and every, all the other students I talked with, um, you, you have impact and it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So I thank you so much for everything you're doing and I can't wait to hear what you do going forward. Thank you so thank much. You. Um, and for expressing interest in interviewing kind of our projects and getting to know a little bit more about the CCSR. Yeah, I mean, this is wonderful. I um, also help write an echo newsletter. So all of this is gonna go in the newsletter. And we'll talk about your projects and all of those things too. So it, it will be on YouTube and Podbean, um, Self Discovery Media on my website, um, a whole bunch of other places. And LinkedIn will have the link to this too. So it will get out there. So thank you, ladies. Thank you. And I'll get back and talk to Michael and Rich again if I may. We're back. <laughs> We're playing musical chairs. Yeah. <laughs> Those guys are so impressive. They are amazing. The way they presented themselves, what they did, the whole thing. Congrats to you guys for setting that up, for giving them the place to do this. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, giving us an opportunity to spread the word. Um, the more people that know about this, I think the better chance it'll be adopted in other places. And um, we really will go forward and try to keep going and get the word out and do that, get more school districts involved. You have to do it. It's, it's not optional. I'm just, I'm telling you, you have to do this. So um, I, I was just telling the young ladies that I am part of a, an Echo Justice newsletter and this will go on there as well. So they have a thousand people and I, I have some other contacts I'm thinking of. I don't know that I can be helpful, but I will try because this is pretty phenomenal. So last words, what would you guys like to round this up with? Well, uh, aside from being very rewarding for us, um, we feel as though we're helping make the world a better place by helping students develop their priorities and interests and becoming leaders because we believe it will snowball and that more people will be affected down the road. You know, as the saying in education, a teacher never knows where his or her influence will end. I'm sure that these students, some of them will go into be 
leaders in this movement uh, because this is something they're not going to forget. Uh, doing a project, project-based learning is a lifelong memory. They're not going to, they're going to go forward. And uh, this is what we need in this country and the world. Yes, we do. I, I endorse that wholeheartedly. Michael, what else do you want to say to us? No, I was listening to Rich and then I'm thinking about when I go home and I watch the news and I see all these awful things on the news and yeah. then I go to work and I, I am every single day, I am so impressed by the students here that take the time to really not only get to know one another and get to know the teachers, but really just have this passion to do, to do good and, you know, to make the world a better place. And they take the time out, out of their after school, out of, you know, when they're after six classes, they're, they're with me and they're working on projects and they're asking for help. And I think to myself, the future is bright. Yeah. I think to myself, these kids are great. And I am so proud to be doing this. I'm so proud to work beside Rich. Um, they, are the, they are the heart and the soul of the organization with the advisors. And um, Andres, I think the future is, is, is looking really good. Well, I agree with you after listening to the two of you and after talking to the students. Yeah, I agree. And I'm, I'm not kidding. This needs to keep expanding. Um, anything I can do, I will do. Um, I have some contacts, we'll see. But you guys are doing well on your own and you're making the right contacts. You have to keep going with this because this is much bigger than you think. And it is so needed. I, I can't even begin to say, I mean, Michael, what you said about the news and all of that stuff, I, I share that with you. And that's why I do what I do, because I get to talk to people like you who are making a difference, who care, who um, have a passion and, and have a respect for life and for humans. So thank you so, so much, all of you. And um, I will sign up. You have a newsletter or something I can sign up for? Because I want to hear what happens next. Um, the closest thing we have is our web page, which yeah. gets updated. Okay. I will do that. And also on that web page, you can see all the other 58 projects <laughs> at the high school. Uh, there are other projects just as uh, impressive mm -hmm. that we couldn't bring forward today. But mm -hmm. um, I, I urge people to check the website out because it has a great deal of information about what's going on. And like I said, we have a student who does the web page. Yeah. <laughs> so one of our leaders updates it is every week. Every single week. Every single week. So wow. I was just going to say that too, um, just to echo what Rich is saying, like we believe that the students, um, this is really a student led organization. We're here on the side, but like mm -hmm. that website is done by a student. Obviously we have a moderator. The Facebook is done by a student. Our Instagram page is done by a student. So awesome. we welcome you to follow our pages. Um, I will. We share all of our projects and all of our news on our pages. Yeah, I can't wait to hear more. So thank you guys so much. Again, it, you don't know what this does for me. I mean, it restores my faith. It gives me hope. Um, it, it's a lot. So I thank you so much. I know that you will be successful. I can wish you success, but you don't need it. And <laughs> this is going to keep going. So thank you again um, for doing this. I so appreciate it. And I will um, send you... Um, when this is done, I will send it to you as well. We want to thank you for, uh, as we say, making the world a better place. Yeah. <laughs> We're all in there together doing it. Thank, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Okay, so. Oh, that was the end of the tape. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bye, guys. You can, you can go now. <laughs> we dismiss. All right. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Class is, class is dismissed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. All right, I can remind you. So thank you all so much for being a part of transformations and and meeting all these wonderful people. Um, I'm so grateful for everyone who appears on Transformations and interviewing people who are changing our world. And thank you for being a part of it by watching it. And um, hopefully this will inspire you to do whatever it is in you to make this a better world. Because we all have the power. And power is not about money and it is not about position. It's about connecting to that passion that's inside of you. So if you've got something that you want to do, you can do it. 
So this is your host, Diane J. Shaver, saying seeing you in two weeks when I'll be interviewing another person who has followed a passion and created a really positive effect. So saying goodbye for transformations, interviewing people, changing our world, and hopefully you will be adding to that, and we'll see you in two weeks.